Hello and welcome to another installment of the Weird Chronicles. Each episode, we bring you tales of action and adventure from Malifaux and the other side. In today's episode, we meet a young thief attempting to make enough script to stay alive. But strange powers walk the streets of Malifaux, and a chance encounter brings Alice face to face with a manifestation of one of the world's most powerful tyrants. I hope you enjoy part one of December's Call, Homecoming. December's Call, Homecoming, by Jonathan Boynton. One year before the event, Alice ducked into the side alley, sprinting for the other end. She slammed her back against the wall behind a pile of crates, peeking past it at the street. No one followed her. The 14-year-old girl let out a relieved gasp and looked around furtively before pulling the stolen purse out of her shirt. Her dirty fingers pulled at the strings, tugging the knot tighter. She frowned and pulled out a knife, cutting the knot with a frustrated grunt. Thin hands trembling. She grabbed the handful of script notes and counted them. Alice groaned, slowly lowering herself to the ground and dropping her head onto her knees. Ten script. Enough to avoid a beating from MacArthur. Or enough to eat tonight. Not enough for both, and she was rapidly running out of time to steal anything else. The streets of Malifaux City were not a place for a small, weak girl to go running around on her own at night. The scar on her cheek twinged at that thought, an old pain she easily ignored. Now what do I do? She muttered, running a hand through dust-covered brown hair. She had to tug to get her hand loose from the knots. Sighing, she stood up and stuffed the purse and money back into her shirt. She walked to the end of the alley, looking down the dark street. The first glimpses of twilight Brilliant hues of purple and green covered the run-down buildings. Alice tapped her fingers on her thigh. Maybe an hour, she thought. Then I have to go back no matter what. Movement in the alleys across the street caught her eye. It was only a momentary thing, a man-shaped shadow flitting across the dark. Alice turned her head, looking at the street, but saw no one. She took a deep breath then plunged forward after the shadow. With luck, it was someone she could steal from, enough to get food and started on tomorrow's payment. It took a few minutes of cautious tracking to find them, and only desperation kept her from running. She didn't know these men, dressed in dark clothing to blend into the night, but she could recognise the quiet sense of deadly purpose that kept them moving. She squinted her hazel eyes, trying to see them more clearly. She spotted a variety of pouches at their waists, ones that would be easy to grab if she was careful. The men turned a corner and she followed, keeping a close eye on the sky. She'd have to be quick. She peeked around and stumbled back with a terrified gasp as a hand grabbed her by the throat. A man stepped away from the wall into her sight. I told you we were being followed, he said. Alice's brain latched onto details like his blonde hair and trimmed beard, the fine material of his clothing, blue eyes wide, a toothy grin on his face. She gasped for air as he squeezed tighter and she tried to scratch his face with her broken fingernails. He laughed and slammed her against the wall, making her squeak from the sharp pain at the back of her head. Feisty little girl, aren't you? What are you doing, Wraithford? Alice's attacker turned his head and sneered. You heard English earlier, didn't you, Harry? You have ears, right? No witnesses, including little girls. Alice panicked, kicking desperately at the bigger man. Wraithford's eyes snapped back to her, his face narrowed in sudden fury. The young thief tried to scream as icy, cold pain filled her throat. Frozen fire spread into her chest and her mouth and ice crystals blurred her vision. She couldn't feel anything but the bitter cold and the agony coming from the man's hand at her throat. 
Her sight went black as the ice forced her eyes closed. A pair of blue eyes with red slit pupils looked down on her, hovering in a pale haze that filled the sky. The inhuman eyes narrowed, drifting lazily in the air. Slowly, a set of vicious fangs emerged beneath the eyes and smiled. The blackness returned, hiding the terrifying sight behind a wall of sudden pain. Alice's chest couldn't move. Her limbs trembled as the cold forced them into painful positions. The anguish tore at her mind and she barely noticed the sudden spark of pain as she hit the ground. After a moment, a dull heat filled her lungs. She became dimly aware of a hand resting on her breastbone, warmth spreading from it. You're weak, Harry. And you're a monster, Wraithford. I'll take where I'm at. I'll be telling Ivan about this, and we'll let him decide whether I should have interfered. Alice heard someone spitting loudly onto the ground, and then boots stalking away. Breathe, damn you girl, the man over her muttered. Alice's back spasmed as breath filled her frozen lungs. She bit her tongue, and coppery blood filled her mouth. She rolled onto her side and sobbed. The man placed a hand on her shoulder to steady her as she coughed up mouthfuls of water and blood. Good. She heard him sigh, then he dropped a small bag on the ground next to her. I can't help you any more than I have. Get out of here, kid. The man stood and walked after the others. The thief knelt on the ground, staring blankly at the purse, spitting out a last mouthful of blood and water. Alice grabbed the bag and ran. What's all this, scamp? The gruff voice demanded. Alice ducked back from Dustin, trying to shield the pouch filled with her tribute from him. The tall man, slickly handsome in his tailored clothing, stuck a foot out and tripped her. She fell on the floor with a grunt and the pouch flew from her hand as his goons laughed. Dustin leaned out and snagged the pouch from the air, then whistled. I'm impressed, girl. He bounced the bag in his hand, head leaned down to listen to the clatter it made. What you managed to find out there today? Something far more than a few script notes. Alice glared at MacArthur's chief enforcer while he opened the bag. His eyes practically glowed with greed as he saw the handful of script notes and the small pile of gold coins that Alice had been given by her saviour. Well, this is far more than I'd rightly expect a slip of a girl like you to find. Where'd you go running today? He knelt down on his heels, staring into her eyes. Alice said nothing, ducking away from the large man. Dustin casually backhanded her, sending her flying. I asked you a question, girl, he said quietly. Alice trembled and tried to push herself away from him. I was working the markets like I was told to, she whispered. A boot settled on her shoulder from behind as one of Dustin's men pinned her in place. Dustin studied her face, then nodded slowly. Good girl. He stood, picking through the contents of the bag, then savagely kicked her in the stomach. Alice screamed and curled into a ball, sobbing. The enforcer slipped the bag into a large pouch on his belt and dropped the script notes on her. Don't lie there too long, girl. MacArthur is expecting you. The men all walked away, laughing. Alice rolled painfully onto her hands and knees, spitting on the ground. No blood this time, thankfully. She laughed, a horrific coughing sound that she could barely recognise as her voice. What a miserable thing to be thankful for. Alice pushed up onto her feet, picking up the notes Dustin had left for her. Not even enough to cover how much she was supposed to get each day. She crushed the money in her thin fingers. It would be the third time this month. 
MacArthur would have Dustin beat her just to keep the other thieves in line. The boss's authority was like that. She angrily brushed away a tear that crawled through the dirt on her face. Alice crawled under her blankets, wincing as she moved. Everything hurt. She could see the bruises already on her arms, although she knew they'd be nothing compared to her back. An edged object underneath the thin layer of straw on the floor scratched along her side, then she bit the inside of her cheek to keep from screaming. She settled back with a small groan, curling up to warm herself in the small closet of the abandoned building. It was far from what she'd be willing to call home, but it was a place to sleep in private. Being alone in Malifaux at night was dangerous, but she preferred to risk the dangers she didn't know to the monsters in the thief gang. A soft weight moved onto her legs, and Alice smiled as she reached down to scratch Luca's ears. The white cat purred, the vibration shaking her entire body. Well, not completely alone. She never knew why it was that Luca had stuck with her, but she had no complaints. A whore cat was more than enough to keep even Malifaux rats out of the building. He had moved in one day when she was ten, and been around ever since. Hey there, she whispered. He turned green eyes to her and flicked an ear, then lowered his head and began to sleep. Smiling lazily, Alice closed her eyes. A pale blue light filled the air. She looked around at the mountaintop, marvelling at the beauty of the snow. She had never seen snow like this before, layers of it that covered everything in sight. Behind her was a dark cave, with icicles hanging down like fangs. She took a cautious step toward it, curious as to what hid in the depths. Suddenly, Alice felt the presence of something leaning over her, something old and powerful. She spun to see a hazy blur studying her, which then floated to look from another angle. The only distinct features were a pair of blue eyes with red slit pupils and a set of vicious fangs below them. The thief blinked several times, memories just out of reach pushing against the edge of her mind. Who are you, little girl? The voice sounded like a growling hurricane one that stretched out the last word in a strange way. Alice stared at the fangs, her spine stiffening. The shape moved again, and she turned her head to watch it. She didn't dare say anything. The jaws rushed towards her, snapping right in front of her nose. Alice screamed, falling to the ground. The fell voice laughed, the sound spiralling around her from all directions. Don't be afraid, child. Rejoice. This is a momentous day. I am December. Alice swallowed a few times. I'm... I'm Alice. Alice Burson. A thief. One afraid of everyone around her. A sudden image of Dustin's leering face laid itself over the haze, and she flinched away from it, bruises suddenly appearing on her arms. They faded with the image. Living day to day, barely scraping by. What a pitiful life. Alice tugged her knees up to her chin, staring at the jaws and fighting back tears. It was true. She dropped her gaze and looked at her broken fingernails. I can make you strong, December whispered, the growl coming from right next to her ear. She turned and saw the jaws gleaming with a wicked smile. Find me, Alice Burson, and I'll make you more 
powerful than your wildest dreams. Power enough to abandon your life of fear. One year later, Alice's eyes snapped open, the growling voice fading to a whisper as it did every morning. Ever since that first time, she had the same dream every night. Her appearance changed as she grew, but the words never did. She gently shoved Luca off her lap, causing the whore cat to stare at her blankly, before yawning and returning to the more important task of sleeping. The thief sat up and stretched, pulling at where her clothes had gotten tangled in her sleep. She stood and walked the short distance to a small basin of water she kept. It was dirty. The last rainfall had been a few days past, but it served her purposes. She wiped some of the dirt off her cheeks, then examined her face in the water, pulling down the skin under one eye with a frown. There were odd flecks of bright blue floating in her hazel eyes, growing larger with each day. She cursed and grabbed a cloth. The change to her eyes was unwelcome and strange, for it made her stand out. Field won't have a hard time finding me with those eyes. Best keep out of their way. The young thief picked up a knife from the floor next to her bedding, tucking it under her clothes, where it snugged against the small of her back. She carefully pushed her way out of the closet room, glancing around to check that the building was still empty. A quiet growl made her turn around, and she quirked an eyebrow at Luca, who slipped past her. Coming with me today? she asked. The whore cat yawned, then walked to the door to the outside world and waited for her. Alice laughed, reaching down to scratch his ears as they went into the city. Luca sniffed the air and growled. Alice turned from her newest mark with a frown, moving back into the shadows of the warehouse. Over the last year, she had moved to the warehouse district for her thieving. The individual purses weren't as good as she could find at a market, but the men who worked the warehouses were around more consistently. Each day she picked on a different group, although she took particular pleasure in stealing from the occasional guild officer when the chance arose. Today had been a good day, all told, and she came looking for one last score before night came on. She knelt down next to the animal. What is it? Alice looked around, staring at the different buildings. They were in the heart of the warehouse district, safely away from any prying eyes, well within the perimeter the guild established against the monsters that lurked in Malifaux. Lamps had been lit as dusk fell, throwing the whole area into stark contrast of light and dark. A horrific scream filled the air. The thief spun on her heels, grabbing frantically for her knife, as a scream was followed by shouting. She crouched low and moved back to the wall, hand clenching on Luca's neck. The whore cat hissed in protest, pulling away from her out of arm's reach. Alice fought the urge to grab him and huddle in one spot. There were more screams and shouting, and the sounds of gunfire came from all around her. What's going on? She gasped for air, pressing back against the wall. Her heart was determinedly trying to pound its way out of her chest. Tears of pain and fear leaked down her face, and she hid her face in her hands. The sounds beat against her mind, getting louder with every moment. What do we do? she asked Luca. She could feel the cat tugging on her legs. Alice looked down into his green eyes and took several deep breaths. Staying here and panicking was not going to help her survive. She took in more air, then nodded at the animal. Keeping low, the two ran for the nearest way out of the district. She flinched at every sound and shadow, but kept moving. She needed to get away from this place faster the better. She nearly sobbed in relief when she recognised the edge of the area. The emotion was immediately replaced with terror as she saw a figure dressed all in white leaning down over a body on the ground. The thief took a step back, nerveless fingers dropping the knife. It rang like a bell as it landed on the brick path. Luca ran forward to the body, pouncing on the meal eagerly. The figure looked up, 
brilliant blue eyes staring at the young girl. Alice would have called the man handsome if his face hadn't been covered in blood. He chewed on something, then spat to the side as he stood, tugging an axe from out of the corpse. The thief turned to run, slamming head first into a white-robed woman. The woman grabbed Alice by the shoulder, wrapping a hand in the younger girl's short hair painfully. Black eyes with specks of blue stared down from a face dripping blood. The man said something Alice couldn't hear over the sound of her thudding heart. She caught one word, a name, Eleanor. I'll deal with her, Stephen. Go back to your meal, Eleanor replied, studying the girl's face. Alice couldn't look away from the red-stained teeth, clean and neat otherwise, that gleamed from that blood-covered visage. Behind her, she could hear the sickening sound of the axe slamming into the corpse, followed by a wet tearing sound. She gagged, and the woman let her drop to the ground while she retched. A gentle hand smoothed the thief's hair. Alice looked up to see the woman leaning down, her expression unreadable. Eleanor reached out and tilted the girl's head back and forth by the chin, staring at her hazel blue eyes. You are marked by him, the woman said finally. Um, what? Alice whispered. She ignored the sounds behind her, focusing all of her attention on Eleanor through sheer determination. You have been called by the master. December has marked you as his prize. Eleanor pointed at her black eyes, the strange colouring so similar to Alice's own. The woman frowned. But you have not answered it. Why? What are you talking about? The mountains to the north call you, child. Eleanor stood and lifted Alice up, placing the knife into the girl's hand. Travel there, and it will all be clear. If you require a guide, go to Ridley and ask for a man named August. Give him this. Eleanor draped a sharp tooth tied with silver wire over Alice's head. She stepped close and pressed her bloody lips to Alice's forehead. Go with his blessing. That's it for another episode of The Weird Chronicles. Join us next time for the conclusion of December's call, Homecoming.